I assure you, I'm getting things a little bit out of proportion here. Listen, Delia, you haven't had to clear up after this guy. <sighs> yes, I know that. I'm not all I'm trying what to is say. Morning, Mum. Yeah. Well, this fellow Lucy's had over more grannies than the red flu. Plus, last summer it was him that had me over on that motorbike. <sighs> Ten stitches. Are you sure? Yeah, okay, I'll see you. See ya. It got grassed up, but we couldn't use it. Inadmissible. Yeah, but what's his form? In and out. You know, he hasn't even got the nous to vary his MO. Reached his level of incompetence. Nicking cars and upending grannies. Ah, oh, John. There you go. Thanks, Viv. <laughs> Caught an early bird, Sarge. Out catching a worm, then, were we? This time, he nicks a doctor's car. And at the doctor's next call, the kid could have actually died, you know. It's got temperature of 105, having these fits, the mother hasn't got a clue, and the doctor's car's been nicked. So what did he get this time? I mean, if he's sent down. Oh, I'll make sure of that. Don't you worry. Went in. I didn't recognise her. Right. Anything to read? Thought this be right up your street, Sarge. Oh, you watch it. How good a lover are you? You what? In there. Hey, Sarge. <laughs> Three icy ones. Two mid-thirties, one a bit older, maybe 40, 45. Met by Cosgrove. Let into premises. Do you know him, Sarge? Not this lot, but I intend to. What's the matter, Sarge? Who is she? Someone I know. Give me five minutes. Well, I can't do three things at once. I'll be back. It's that all day hanging around the three shoplifters. And the case against Mr. Livesey? Yeah, you're all right. First on, court two. Who's on the bench? It's Judge Pendry. Mr. Cox. Thank you. Well, I may as well come and sit down on your case, then. No, it's going to be like pushing a juggernaut up Snowden. What? Mandy! Hello, oh, Mandy. Mandy. Will you stop? What? Listen, I want to talk to you. I say it. About what? About where you've just been. For God's sake, Ted, what are you trying to do to me? Oh, listen, no, you don't. Just sod off! This man's attacking listen, me! Listen, now, listen. We can do this any way you want, love. You want to be nicked? I'll nick you. Or do you want to answer some questions? So, it is our submission, sir, that this vehicle was taken without the owner's consent from outside that first patient's house by Mr. Livesey. And in the full knowledge that it was a doctor's vehicle. The result of the taking of this vehicle was that Dr. Prebin was late for an urgent call to a very sick little boy. The boy, in fact, recovered, but... I object. Of... Implied hypothetical results are totally irrelevant to this Sir, case. I am merely trying to underline the seriousness of the crime of stealing a doctor's car. But a case consists of facts, Mr. Hulse. I'm sure we're all aware of the seriousness of the crime. Carry on. Yes. Honestly, it won't be as bad as you think. No. Whatever they say about lighting, eyesight, anything, just tell the truth and stick to your story. Yeah, but, well, to be honest, I'm not sure what the truth is anymore. I mean, it looked like red hair, sort of. And I'm not really certain about the jacket. Miss Julie Lee! But you did see him getting into the car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I saw someone. Miss Julie Lee! Right. All 
might love. Before you get any thoughts, it doesn't count as a brothel. Oh, come on, Mandy. Like I say, you're wasting your time. So, what were you doing in Willersley Road? No comment. Okay, then I'll tell you. You went there to see a man called Cosgrove. I saw you coming out of the house. So? So it looks as though he's starting up here, moving down his empire from the West End. I don't have to answer any of this. Well, maybe I got it all wrong. Maybe he's supplying you with something. Yeah, you look at it. I'm clean. Typical copper, aren't you, Ted? Do you really need me to tell you he's a pimp? So what were you doing there? We don't like him any more than you do, so tell me, Mandy. Why me? Why pick on me? Well, that's the way it works, love. Look, I'm not associated with him, right? So Look, why... you say that you saw me coming out of there. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's your word against mine, isn't it? Like you say, it's off my patch. Okay, what are you getting so steamed up about? If it's just because of another pimp moving in. He's not just a pimp. No, you're right. He's into extortion. But you know more about it than I do, Mandy, so what is it? No way. You know we look after you. Oh, will you? I'll do what you like as far as I'm concerned. I'm not bothered what happens to me. It's, it's other people. You and me both, Mandy. But whatever's going on with Cosgrove, I need to know. Have you ever been to Amsterdam? I saw that documentary about the American judicial system, and then I turned over, I saw a wildlife film about hyenas killing antelopes, and I thought, hang on, this is the same program, isn't it? <laughs> so, uh, what's up with the chief super? Uh, you found him a bit off colour, did you? Come on. Is there something I should know? He got clamped down the West End last night. Never does you any good culture, does it? I should give him a wide berth if I were you. Point taken. Thank you, Detective Constable. That's all, sir. Detective Constable Martella, when you found the vehicle and the scene of crime officer came to look at it, there was one fingerprint found and that matched Mr. Livesey's fingerprints. That's right. Yes. And was there any evidence that might indicate that the vehicle had in fact been driven by my client? Was there any other evidence? Well, I think Or we am I right in thinking that the only evidence found was that one fingerprint? And that was found not on the steering wheel or the rear view mirror or the handbrake or the gear stick, all of which would have been used to actually drive the car, but found instead only on the dashboard. Some surfaces are better than others for taking fingerprints. And the rear view mirror? A nice smooth surface. So, Detective Constable, there was no other evidence. Could I refresh my memory, please? Uh, yes, please do. James Livesey, car theft. Oh, oh no, sorry, uh, that, that's, that's the wrong place. Do carry on, Detective Constable. Well, no, I'd, yes. uh, well, no, I'd paperclip these together, so I'd rather not. But these are notes relating to my client, are they not? Well, yes. Well, then let's hear them, please. I insist. But I'm not... Please. Supposed... June 1987, taking and driving away, £250 fine. April 1989, taking and driving away, three months suspended sentence. Oh, stop there, Detective Constable. Sir, I ask that this material be disregarded. Well, of course, Mr Ambrose. Detective Constable Martella, he must be well aware that reference to any previous convictions is not admissible in court. <laughs> well, yes, sir, I did try and explain, but Mr Ambrose insisted... So I thought he must be right, as it was in my notebook. No, Detective Constable, you should not have read that out. No, sir. Mr Ambrose, do you have any further questions to put to the officer? No, I don't. Thank you, sir. You may stand down. DC Carver to DS Roach, receiving. Carver to Roach, receiving, over. Sierra Oscar from DC Carver! 
Get out! Sarge? Go ahead, Jim. It's just gone dead, Sarge. Where is he, Kathy? On that oboe, I think, with Sergeant Roach. I'm a police officer! Who's a nosy Parker, then? What happens to nosy Parkers, Derek? We don't like being watched. It's just... we're shy. Oh, can I give a hand, love? Oh, you won't mind. Oh, here we go. It's murder cut and these two around. Yeah, I can imagine oh. so. You would have been I'm not Excuse me. You never find a policeman when you want one, can you? I've seen it done before. Yeah, Ooh. And I learned from it. <laughs> <laughs> but it ain't in the training manual, is it? Yeah, well, you know what they say, Delia? Uh, uh, you don't start learning to drive till you pass your test. <laughs> ah, Detective Cummings. I think I might find you in here. Do you mind if I come in? Yeah, I do. Now tell me, what did you do that for? What's that? <sighs> that little performance in court. Oh, it was a mistake. I didn't intend to. Yes, you're to... right. It was a mistake. For your career. I allowed this observation to be set up because Detective Sergeant Roach convinced me that this man, whatever his name is, was potentially dangerous. Cosgrove. Pardon? I, I don't think there's any doubt about that, sir. To be honest with you, I'm beginning to doubt quite a few things about Sergeant Roach. Neglecting his post, endangering the safety of another officer, allowing suspects to get away. Can we hold on this until we've talked to him? Yes, I think that would be the most sensible thing, sir. Well, we all know how plausible his explanation is going to be, don't we? Because we've heard it all before. If I was Jim Carver, I certainly wouldn't want to go out on a job with Roach again. Because when push comes to shove and you've got Roach behind you, you'll get it. Look, go and see if the surgeon's in. He'll look at it for you. No, it's all right. Look, it could be dodgy. It's your septum. You know that. He'll soldier on, Tosh. Right. Won't you, Jim? Nothing you enjoy more. Successful morning, Sarge. Push off, Mike. Tosh. Yeah? Tony Wickford, Vice Squad. Didn't you used to hang about with him? Yeah, we're at Bow Street together. Right, let's get on to him. You want a taste of this? Yeah, yeah. sure. Why were you gone so long? What? Well, if you had... Look, you got yourself into that jam, not me. Yeah, while you were doing what, exactly? Business. Now, you're gonna sit there whining or help me nail these fellas to the wall? Now, of course not. All my officers are quite familiar with what the rule book says. I'm sorry, Mr. Halsby, until I've talked to the officer concerned... No, cheap tricks aren't my style, either. Thank you. Yes, quite, Mr. Hulse. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. Good day. Yeah, Cosgrove. First name's George Albert. Look, okay. all I'm saying is... Oh, look, you've lots no, more Jim. problems than just losing the film. It would have been yeah, useful yeah. to have you there. What about him? Well, anything, really, yeah. It came as a bit of a surprise to us. What do you think? No. Look, I wasn't actually on the office. Sorry, you shouldn't have opened the door. Um, well, I thought it was you. Michael. Why didn't you ask? Because you, you said it'd only be five minutes. Yeah, well, just, uh, but as it was, old Obbo was cocked up. Yeah, it wasn't my cock up. Oh, I see exactly what it was. Well, so I heard. Ted Foe. Could I have a moment of your precious time? Hello, Sergeant Wickford. Can you give me five minutes? Viv Martell are back yet, Tosh? Yeah, she's downstairs, Gov. Oh, that's good. Go and get her. That's good. Yeah. Uh, that's good. But then they put Livesey himself in the box. What's your car like, Mr. Livesey? A blue estate. And what's the doctor's car like? A blue estate. So they were trying to say that it was all just a big mistake, that he got in the wrong car and he got out again. And for a minute, I thought the beak was going to buy it. But he didn't, because he remembered my little bit of unofficial me. information. Yeah. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Some of these beaks, eh? Only a side confession will yeah. do. You got a minute, Viv? So we got? DI wants you upstairs. I don't know all about. Three copies of the beast. Anyway. See you then, Lance. Well, yes, I suppose if he is a persistent trespasser, you could go to court, you could get an injunction. But if it's a neighbour, don't you think you should try a bit of tact? I'm not a tactful person. I want a word with you. Yeah, I was just coming. There's been a phone call about you. Oh? And it wasn't to me. It was to the DCI. Oh. And it didn't make her eyes sparkle. What the hell have you been playing at, Viv? Oh, Frank, could I have a quick word? 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to be with the DCI for the next ten minutes, sir. After that? Yes, of course. I was only doing what I'd seen done before. Viv! What cretin did you ever seen do that? Now, what is it with you? A brainstorm? Inspiration? Or a personal crusade against the British system of justice? I know you had a result. But in the present climate, Viv... Yeah, yeah. Have you got uh, customs the next day, Jim? Yeah. That cretin, as you put it, sir, was you. You what? Gov. Later. In here. Please. Explain. The first case I ever saw you in, Gov. I was still on the beat. Phil Haley. Look, can't you choose what to remember? We're meant to learn, aren't we, Gov? All right, I put the paper clips in. That was a touch I thought up myself. Same idea, getting the defence to let you... Look, Viv, times change. You do not have to imitate your elders and betters. No. A few months ago, it would have been gin and tonics all round. But now, you and I are looking like a couple of Christmas turkeys. I'm sorry, Gov. You will be, if you drop me in it with her. All you had to say was that what you had written there was inadmissible. But you didn't say that, did you? No, Mom. No. Why not? Well, it was obvious he was guilty, and I just thought... Yes, but you know and I know that whether you thought he was guilty or not is not the point. But I knew it, Mom. That doesn't matter. Look, I got a result, Mom. That's what I meant to do. I know. So but... what do you want? Well, you can start by learning that you don't talk to your detective chief inspector in that tone. Is that understood? Yes, Mom. Quite apart from the fact that you very nearly committed contempt of court, that little trick of yours has given Livesey the right to appeal. So it doesn't look quite so smart now, does it? No. And I don't care where you learned that kind of thing. Just unlearn it. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Mum. Good. Well, if we're talking about the same man, he could well be in this country. Yeah. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, OK, I'll get back to you. I got you. You've got a pile of admin. Got it? Starting with sorting out some property. Your turn. Yeah. Now, don't tell me you're putting Mandy Clough down against expenses. Take a look at that. You recognise him? Should I? Well, not unless you go to the gay bars in Amsterdam. Now, don't get clever with me. Mandy Clough wasn't giving Cosgrove or me a routine service this morning. She went round there to try and get her brother back. What? Cosgrove has been supplying rent boys to bars in Amsterdam. Mandy's little brother is one of them. One of the fellas that we saw this morning, by the name of Sudbury, Mandy told me that he runs the operation over here. I got onto the vice squad, and they've already got pictures of him talking to boys in Piccadilly. But that's all they've got. Go on. This is where it gets interesting. I think this fella is the Amsterdam connection. Name? Pick any one of a half a dozen but the description does fit a man called Taylorson, whom the customs and excise people want to have a talk with in connection with a VAT fraud. Very nice. Let's wrap it up. Two things. Oh, look, see, that Mandy Clough business. I mean, I am entitled to a little wind-up, aren't I? Yeah, OK. What's the other thing? Taylorson's mine. Uh, number 29. Oh, very nice, too. That's it, then. All present and correct. Oh. Hello, Viv. What are you up to? Dealing with property. What does it look like? Thanks, Brian. I mean, what do they want? Someone didn't approve. Hypocrites. I mean, there's 15 different sets of rules in this place. How are we meant to know which ones we're meant to follow? Look, Viv, you want sympathy? Go back to the boys in the canteen. Well, what can I do for you, then? Look, I never meant for this to happen, right? I never wanted to speak to that prat that you work with. Oh, come on, Mandy. No. I want to go home. I've changed my mind. If all this gets Look, out... if that man isn't feel... stopped, it could get a lot worse for your brother. Oh, yeah? How could it? Oh, come on, Mandy. Look, sit down. Look, 
you didn't object to coming here, did you? And if you really want to, you can leave at any time. But you want to see Cosgrove and Taylorson put away, don't you? How do I know you'll get Terry back? How do I know? Well, I can't promise anything. But you've got a much better chance if you're prepared to give evidence, believe me. Now, what do you say? Bit of business for you, John. These two men have been arrested on suspicion of being concerned in the abduction of these two boys for immoral purposes. Hang on. Tony. Cheers, mate. Hey, take these two lads and give them a cup of tea and stay with them. I hope such. Through the door, sir. This man is known to be Derek Anthony Taylorson. Also wanted for questioning by the Customs and Excise. Want to book him in? Ted! Oh, thank God for that. We throw the book at him in all about 19 volumes. You stay with her. Tell her I'll be with her in about 10 minutes. Well, that will make her day. So, you got lucky. What, in for a penny, in for a pound? Final pull on the old fruit machine? Something like that. Well, as you said yourself, there's no such thing as luck. If it does exist, you make it yourself. Who is the arresting officer? Oh, I am. I'll see you later, Gov. <laughs> 